Hey guys, Sherm here, and today I'm going to be testing the Lotus Amira at Golden Max in Asphalt 9 multiplayer. Please consider subscribing if you have not already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel as well as my Purple Team Discord. Both of those you can find linked down below in the description, and I hope you enjoy these races. The Lotus Amira never actually had its own Gold Max multiplayer season, so I instead decided to test it in the British Tour season, where you could drive pretty much all of the British Tour season cars. Now, this does mean that I will be facing cars like the Jaguar XJ220S and McLaren Senna GTR in this video in this D-Class car that is a lot slower than those. Under 200 miles per hour, or 199 to be exact, and a lot of the other cars in this race, like the Senna GTR can get close to 230, and the Jaguar XJ220S is above 240. So obviously, if I use this car in Elite or Master League, I would get absolutely demolished, and there's nothing I could do about it. So instead, most of the races in this video are recorded in Rookie League, with this one in the beginning in Novice League, and one at the end in Pro League. And this kind of balanced out the fact that the other cars that I'm facing against are technically a lot better than mine, but I was actually able to beat a lot of them, as you'll see throughout this video. In this first race, we are in second place to this McLaren Senna GTR up ahead, but we are beating another Senna GTR. We're beating a couple of XJ220Ss, which I will be making a video about in Forza Horizon 4 sometime soon, by the way, maybe in a couple days if I decide to upload that one then. And we're also beating two Altima RSs, which strangely enough actually came Came in last and third to last place. Not entirely sure about that. And in this next race on Nevada, we're facing a couple of XJ220Ss, a McLaren GT, a Senna GTR, a V12 Speedster, and a couple of Continental GT3s. With a gold max rank below 2000, the Amira sits at kind of the low middle section of D class. It is certainly not one of the better cars in its class. And I don't really understand what its use is going to be. I mean, I did fairly well with it throughout this video, but that really is only because I was in lower leagues in the season. Now, I can imagine it would do okay in Bronze League and maybe even Silver League multiplayer in regular multiplayer, but not much beyond that. And although it feels totally fine to drive, I mean, I had no physics issues, it was pretty stable and everything. It's just too slow, it's nitro isn't the best, it's drifting is not the best as you can see around this turn right here. It just doesn't really have anything going for it that would allow it to stand out in pretty much any area. So what you're going to be seeing in this video are six of the best races I had with this car in the season on five different tracks. And I did actually unlock this car, I got it at two stars. Um, but as you can see, by at max, it going less than 200, not even drifting that great, it's not going to be any better at two stars. In fact, it will be even worse. So because of that, I don't really think I'll be making a video about that car at two stars. Um, I also unlocked the McLaren GT at one star, but again, since it's low stars, I don't really see much point in making a video about that when I already have tested it at Golden Max in its own multiplayer season. Now, I might try it. If it does surprisingly well, then I might make a video about it after all. I did that with cars like the, say for example, Genti Aculon, which I had at one star for the longest time. But because it was fast, like that's the Genti Aculon standout stat, it's speed even at low ranks. Because it was fast, I was able to drive it fairly well even at one star and pull out some good wins. But a one star McLaren GT or two star Amira, probably not going to happen with that. This next race is on Scotland against another Lotus Amira, one of the only ones that I actually faced while making races for this video because, well, it was pretty much the slowest car in the season, so nobody would really much pick it because of that. Because you could drive any car in the season in any league, you could use the Ultima RS from Novice League. So because of that, pretty much nobody is going to choose the Amira, except for me, because I'm a masochist. Not really, but these videos are fun to make. We've also got a Senna GTR, a couple of V12 Speedsters, and an Altima RS, who actually ended up being our main competitor in this race, which sounds so funny to say, because the Altima RS goes over 70 miles per hour faster than me. Oh, and side note, I only had this car at one star when testing it in the season, so that is why it is not purple in these races, but it is at the beginning of the video. I two-starred it later. But to make up for that, I did blue in half my races and red in the second half of my races, so you'll kinda get a purple combination throughout this video. The Senna GTR that was battling that Altima fell off the track, and so because of that, I come in second place to this Altima ahead of all of these other cars. Not too bad. And now for another race on Scotland against another Altima RS and three V12 Speedsters. I, I don't understand why somebody would choose the V12 Speedster over other cars here because it's just plain not as good, looks ugly on the front. 
you've heard me talk about that car before. I digress. So we've got a few events going on in Asphalt 9 right now as I'm recording this. We got the Arash AF8 Looper Pre, which I have made a video about, by the way, if you guys haven't seen it yet and would like to check it out. Um, I was going to try to make a video about that car, but because these seasons are so short, whenever I come across a season that has one of these newer cars that I can test in it, I never get actually much time to play races in them. So I recorded like a few races in that car, but it wasn't really enough to make into a video. So now I'm waiting for another ray or another uh, season, I should say, that also has that car in it. Um, we'll see how that works though. I gotta say, I don't really care for these single day seasons because some days I'm just really busy and don't have time to play. So I would prefer if they lasted at least two days, maybe three days. I think that would be pretty fine and you still be able to have a lot throughout the season. But I feel like one day is just too little. Just like I feel like one day is too little for the Grand Prix rounds. I feel like the two day Grand Prix rounds are much better because you get more time to practice, more time to play, especially if you miss a day, for example. If I miss a day of Asphalt 9, then I missed an entire multiplayer season. I just, I, I, like I said, I like the idea of having shorter seasons, but not this short. And then we have two special events going on as well. One for the Vision 1789, I believe it is. I keep forgetting whether it's 89 or 98. Anyway, that car that is basically a copy of the Tourism Millennial with better handling. I will be trying to get that one as well as trying to max out my Regera, which shouldn't be too bad. I might have to buy some blueprints for that car or packs for that car for blueprints, I should say. But I should be able to get most of them in the event. Definitely go and try to do that. Make a video about it when I actually have enough credits uh, to be able to afford the upgrades because they get very expensive on high end S class cars. That was what stopped me from making a video about my gold max Sheeran for a while because, well, I hadn't gold maxed it yet since I was missing some credits for it. I don't think I'll be able to completely gold max the Regera, but I will be at least six starring it and maxing it out as best that I can with the epics and stuff that I have. And wow, look at that. We actually got a first place in this car on Buenos Aires of all places. That was actually the only first place I got this whole season with this car, fun fact. Because usually there was at least one person that got way ahead of me for whatever reason. Well, I shouldn't say for whatever reason, typically because they're just a lot faster than me and they could handle the car well. Um, but in this final race on Auckland, it's time for me to give my general review about this car. It's pretty much your average low to mid tier D class car. It doesn't really have a whole lot going for it. I suppose its speed for its rank is pretty good, but you're not really ever only going to be facing other cars at the same rank as this one. Unless, of course, Gameloft brings back a rank matchmaking base season, which I think would be pretty cool. But this car's nitro is only average, its acceleration is kinda meh, and its drifting isn't the greatest either. Stable car, but not one that I really see having much use from now on. Thank you all so much for watching, please do like the video if you have enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt, Forza, Minecraft, and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone!